All right, so today we're going to start 6.1, which is the Law of Signs. These sections we're going to do one at a time so that we make sure and cover them and make sure that everybody understands what we're doing because these are really going to be the rules that we use for solving most applications involving trig, okay? Because most of the time, you're not going to have a right triangle when you're dealing with triangles. And what we're going to start dealing with is oblique triangles. So we want to learn how to use the law of signs to solve oblique triangles. Uh, use the law of signs, if possible, to solve the ambiguous case. Uh, we want to find the area of an oblique triangle using only the sine function. And lastly, solving applied problems using the law of signs. So the first thing is, what is an oblique triangle? Well, an oblique triangle is just any triangle that doesn't have a right angle in it. Okay, It's a non-right triangle. So we know how to solve right triangles. We've been doing it, right? You find your angle. You can find sine, cosine, tangent, and relate it to the opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, that sort of thing. But if I don't have a right triangle, now all of a sudden I don't have a hypotenuse. I can't use all of my formulas, so I have to do something else. Now, we have an oblique triangle here that has three acute angles, right? This is an acute triangle. Or it could have two acute angles and one obtuse angle. So this is going to be an obtuse oblique triangle. Okay? This is just a little bit of geometry background, right? Everybody should be familiar with uh, acute and obtuse triangles. Now, the relationship among the sides of angles and right triangles are defined by those trig functions that we've been doing but they're not valid for any of these oblique triangles. So we're going to look at something called the law of sines. If A, B, and C, all caps, now when we do triangles, we always use capital letters for angles and lowercase letters for sides, and they tend to be in pairs. Like big A will be paired up with little a. It'll be the angle and the side opposite it. Okay, so when I draw out a triangle like this, Notice A and little a are opposite each other. B and little b are opposite each other. C and little c are opposite of each other. So this is important to recognize when we're doing law of sines. So as long as these are your angles and A, B, and C are the lengths of the sides, then A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So now, if I'm given either two sides and an angle, or two angles and a side, then I can set these ratios up and solve for the, the things that I don't know. Okay? Like side, 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 uh, yes, exactly. So we're going to start looking at things like side, angle, side, angle, side, side, <coughs> angle, side, angle, you know, th those sort of things. So when we solve a triangle, what are we doing? We're looking for all the lengths, all the angles. Okay? So anytime I ask you to solve a triangle or anytime your homework asks you to solve a triangle, that's what we're doing. We're looking for all of the angles, all of the sides. Now the law of sines can only be used to solve a triangle where you've got one side and two angles. Okay? It's the only way to do it. The three known measurements can be abbreviated using SAA, side angle angle, or ASA for angle side angle. And this just means that here we have two angles and the side that is not included between them. Here we have two angles and the side included between them. So the difference between these is if I have that this is 25 and this is 40 and this is 8, then that's angle, side, angle. Right there in a row. However, if the 8 is over here, that side is not between them, therefore this is an angle, angle, side. Okay? Just semantics, but. Now, if I want to solve this triangle, Now that we know that there's a relationship between the sides and the angles, we can use the law of cosines to do it. So I know that I'm given A equals 64 and C equals 82. To use law of sines, I'm going to have to have either little a or little c. Okay? Here I happen to have little c. So that tells us that C over sine of big C equals A over sine of big A. That's the, that's the part of the law of sines we're going to use to solve for the one unknown we don't have, the A. So I'm going to plug all that in. 14 over the sine of 82 equals A over the sine of 64. 
All right, so how do I solve for A? All right, I multiply both sides by sine of 64. I get that A is equal to the sine of 64 times 14 divided by the sine of 82. So we use our calculator. Making sure we're in what mode? Degrees, right? Because these have degrees. So we're going to say sine of 64 times 14 and then divide that by the sine of 82. And if we want to do it to the nearest tenth, 12.7 centimeters. Okay, that gave us A. Now we need to find B. But what information do I have that I'm going to be able to use? Can't use Pythagorean theorem because it's not a right triangle. Right, we know that we can find B because we've got the other two angles, right? I know that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So if I do that, what does angle B have to be? Thirty-four. So now we can set up basically the same thing we just did using C over sine C equals B over sine B. Now, do I want to use A? Could I use A? You could use A, but what's the problem? It's not exact, right? It's rounded. So that's going to give us a little bit of error if we use A. So generally, we want to use values that are given that are exact. Okay? If we can't, that's fine. We'll get some kind of you know, approximate answer. But anytime we can, we really should use those exact answers. So that's why we'll use B instead of A. So this is going to give us 14 over sine 82 equals B over sine 34. Multiply both sides by sine of 34. We get B equals 34 times 14 divided by sine of 82 rounded to the nearest tenth 7.9 centimeters because there's 180 degrees in a triangle 180 minus 64 minus 82 So now we've got all three angles, we've got all three sides, triangle has been solved. Now, the beauty of this is that the law of sines, A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C, they're ratios, right? It's like saying one half equals one half equals one half. Now, what if you forget that? Would it hurt you to put sine C over C equals sine B over B equals sine A over A? No, it's still a ratio, right? It would be like saying 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1. So if you forget which order it is, it's still going to work. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. What if this were a right triangle? Could you use the law of sines? Absolutely. There's no reason not to use the law of sines ever because it always will work. You'll just wind up with, you know, the sine of 90, which is 1, so you'll, something will be over 1, which, hey, that's fantastic. It's just a number, right? So it, it simplifies things when you're doing law of sines, but you can use it. So don't get worried up on this, you know, section. If you happen to see a right triangle, you can still use the same formulas. Although you can go back and use the other formulas that you already know, too. So you could actually check your answer, okay? what I 
back up. That's wrong. All right, so here we have a triangle. And be careful when you're doing these. Not always are the triangles to scale. So just because they look like an angle might be this or they look like an angle might be this doesn't guarantee that they will, okay? Or that a side is a certain length or, you know, it's not always going to be accurate. So here we're given that A is equal to 40 degrees, C is equal to 22.5 degrees, and B is equal to 12. So the first thing we can do is we can automatically look at it and find out what side B is, right? So what's the, what, what's angle B or uh, angle B? But angle B, not side B. 117.5. Automatically, because angle B has to be 180 minus A minus C, right? So now we can set up our ratios. We can do 12 over sine of 117.5 equals uh, C over <coughs> sine of 22.5. We can also have 12 over sine 117.5 equals A, or little a, over sine of 40. So we multiply both of these sides by sine of 22.5. We get C equals whatever that is. And over here we multiply by sine of 40. And we get that A equals whatever that is. y'all. Y'all figure that out. Let me go get an actual calculator. My phone is not good. So we get C equals 5.2. We don't have a unit associated with this problem, so it's just 5.2. And then sine of 40 times 12 divided by... Point seven. Okay. So how challenging does this appear? It's not real. It's not real bad, right? This, to me, this when we get into law of sines and law of cosines, it tends to be just a little bit easier than the other stuff because I'm not throwing so much at you. Now, when we get into law of cosines uh, next week, that formula is a little weird, but most of you shouldn't have a problem remembering it. Okay. All right, so now we want to talk about something called the ambiguous case. If we're given two sides of an angle, or two sides and an angle that is opposite one of those two sides, the SSA, uh, it's possible that we might not get a triangle at all. It's possible we might get two triangles. 
Okay? Now, this is why we call it the ambiguous case, because we don't really know for sure how many triangles there are. But we can use some information to determine how many triangles there are. I'm going to show you some stuff, and then I'm going to show you the easier way to do it. So, let's assume that we have side-side angle. We're given B, we're given A, and we're given big A. Notice, if A is longer than B, okay, then it has to go out that way. It can't swing back in, because then it's going to be going in the wrong direction, right? So, if A is longer than B, we can only possibly have one triangle. However, if A is less than B, there are a couple of different things that can happen. We could have a right triangle, but that's still only one triangle. We could have no triangle if A is not long enough to reach down and, and connect, or if A is just long enough, it could swing in and still form an inside and you know, an obtuse triangle, or it could swing out and form an acute triangle. So there's the possibility that we could have multiple situations going on here. Okay. Now, the proper way of doing this is to apply this little formula where we can check the height of the triangle. Okay, the height of the triangle will always be given by B sine A. Why? Because this is a right triangle if I drop it down, right? And this height, if I know what A is, I can compare it using the sine because sine of A is equal to H over B using our trig formula. So I know that H is equal to B sine A. If A is longer than that, it has to be one triangle. If A is exactly equal to that height, that guarantees that it's going to be a right triangle. If H, uh, if A is less than H B sine A, it can't have a triangle at all. There's no triangle. And if A is less than uh, B but still greater than that height, then we would have two triangles. Now. You don't have to remember this, okay? Because when you're actually doing the problems, they'll manifest extra solutions. You'll be able to see if there are going to be extra solutions. You may see that there are no solutions, okay? So what is it going to look like? <coughs> Let's look at one that has no solution. Solve triangle ABC if A is equal to 50, A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20. So here we've got side-side angle, right? <laughs> So we know that there's the possibility. This is the ambiguous case when you're given two sides and one of the angles. So let's work it out and see if we can just solve it. So let's draw a triangle. I'm going to call this A. So this is going to be little a equals 10. I'm going to call this B. So this is going to be little b equals 20. And this will be C, so this will be little c. Now, I know that A over sine A equals B over sine B. Now I can plug the values that I know in and solve for the one value that I don't have. So A is equal to 10 over sine of 50 equals 20 over sine of B. So here I'm going to multiply. I'll, let's just cross multiply so we can, you know, simplify this. So 10 sine b equals 20 sine 50. And then since I'm looking for b, I'm going to divide by 10. So I get that sine b equals 2 times sine of 50. All right, so 2 times sine of 50 gives us that sine B equals 1.53209. What's the problem here? Can you take the sine of an angle and get a number bigger than one? No, remember, you can't get a number less than negative 1 or bigger than 
positive 1. They have to be between negative 1 and 1. So I can't take, and if you try to use, what, what, how would we normally solve this? Which function would we use? If we've got the value but we need the angle, what are we going to use? We're going to use arc sine, right? So if you plug this into your calculator and do arc sine of 1.53209, what happens? You get a domain error. Yeah. So if you're working this along and you come across error, oh, no solution. There's no triangle. Okay. You don't have to compare H to anything. You know, there's no reason to do all of that. But it derived itself out. You wound up with an error. You know, you've got no triangle. Okay. Now let's look at one that's got a couple of solutions. Same deal here. We're given A and B and big A. So if A is 35 degrees, A is 12, and B is 16. So we're going to do the same thing. A over sine A equals B over sine B. 12 over sine of 35 equals 16 over sine of B. So we can cross multiply. We get 12 sine B equals 16 sine 35. Divide by 12. We get sine B equals 16 times sine of 35 divided by 12. 0.764769. All right. Now that value is between negative 1 and 1. So I know that I'm going to get a value. So I'm going to use arc sine of 0.764769. Okay. And so we get. It is equal to it. And if we want to round it to the nearest degree, we get 50 degrees. <coughs> now. I just wrote it out that way. You, you, that's going to be in your calculator, so there's no reason to round it at all. I just did it to when I wrote it out. I tend to write out a bunch of digits. Yeah, same thing. All right, now, here's where we get into trouble. If B is 50 and A is 35, what is C have to be? Ninety-five degrees? All right. Here's where we get our issue. If B is greater than A, There are two solutions. <coughs> now, why or how does this happen? It happens because of this arc function right here. Okay, arc functions uh, for sine are positive in the first quadrant. They're also positive in the second quadrant. Okay? So if we have, you know, an angle here, there is an equivalent angle in the second quadrant. Whether it's applicable or not is only if B is bigger than A. So if we think about 50 as being the reference angle, 
what would the second quadrant equivalent of the 50 degree reference angle be? That's going to be 180 minus 50, or 180 minus the first B. Okay? In this case, it'll be 180 minus B equals 130. Now, if B is 130 and A is 35, now what is C? Fifteen degrees. Now, if you don't remember that B has to be greater than A, okay, you can still find B, but what'll happen? C won't be possible. If you add B and A together, you'll get a, bi a number bigger than 180. So you don't even have to remember this quality. Once again, if you just find the second possible B by subtracting it from 180, if you find an angle for C, then bam, you've got two triangles. If you don't find a, an angle for C, ignore it and you've only got one triangle. Okay? Now we're only half done. Now that we've determined there are two triangles, we have to solve both triangles. We've got all the angles. Now we have to use these different C values to find little c, okay? Which I'm going to fast forward through. All right, so the first one we set up with B equal 50 degrees, so we've got B over sine B equals C over sine C. They go ahead and solve it out so you can see what it is, but we're just going to put the values in and get 16 times sine of 95 divided by sine of 50 is going to give us our C, which is going to be about 20.8. Now, I'll work the other one out. Since B is going to be 16 over <laughs> sine of 130 equals C over sine of 15, we cross multiply 16 sine 15 equals C sine 130 divided by sine of 130. We get that C equals 16 times sine of 15 divided by sine of 130. C is equal to 5.4. Okay. So any time that you've got angle side side, okay? We're going to solve it like we did. We're going to get our one value if we can, okay? So if we do A over sine A equals B over sine B and we get that there's no possible B, then I have no triangles, okay? If I get a value for B, then I'm going to subtract 180 minus that number to get a second one. And I'm going to see if both of them work. If they both work, I have two triangles. If both of them don't work, I only still have one triangle. Okay? So those are the, the steps for solving the triangles. Let me Say I give you that A equals 42 degrees, little a equals 
12 and little b equals 16. I need to know how many triangles this is going to form. That's all I'm asking. I don't want you to solve the triangles. I just want you to tell me how many triangles this is going to give us. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? What value am I going to look for first? I'm going to look for B, okay? Big B. So I know that A over sine A equals B over sine B. Everything hinges on B, okay? So let's plug everything in. We get 12 over sine of 42 equals 16 over sine B. So 12 sine B equals 16 sine 42 divided by 12 sine B equals 0.89217414418, whatever. So do I have a triangle? Yes, I'm guaranteed to at least have one triangle. All right, so if that's the case, then I use the arc sine function of that number. And I get that B is equal to, let's round it to the nearest, degrees, 63 degrees. So if our first angle B is 63 degrees, what is our second angle B? Or the other way? 117. We do 180 minus B to get the second B. Okay? So, if this is 42 and this is 63, what does C have to be? Seventy-five. 75. And over here, close. 21. So we got values for all of our angles. That means we got two triangles. <laughs> what if I make a, say, twenty? All that's going to do is change that 12 to 20. So I'm going to have sine B equals 16 sine of 42 divided by 20, which in this case I get sine B equals 0 0.535304, whatever. Which means when I do the arc of that, I get that B equals 32 degrees. Now notice B is now less than A. If I notice that, I know automatically there's only going to be one triangle. But if I don't recognize that, if this, th if this B is 32, what does the other B have to be? Well, it would be 180 minus 32, if there were one. And that would be 148 degrees. Okay, so if B is 32 and A is 42, what does C have to be over here? It'd be 106, because it's 180 minus 42 minus 32. Now over here, we get 180 minus 42 minus 148, which means that C would have to be negative 10 degrees. Can we have a triangle that has a negative 
angle? No. So that lets us know that there's only going to be one triangle. But like I said, if you recognize that we're really just comparing B, A and B, if, a, if B is bigger than A, two triangles. If B is less than A, one triangle. But if you forget that, you can always work it out. All right? Now, say we want to find the area of a triangle, but all we have are these values here, and it's not a triangle that we have in, you know, what's the formula for area of a triangle? One half base times height. Yeah, one half base times height. So here, I could rearrange it so that I could have the base, right? Because it doesn't matter which side is the base. But I won't have the height on any of it. Okay, so I can't really use that formula. However, because I know some trig, I can manipulate it and get something else. All right, so if you think about this, this doesn't help us a whole lot. Why? I still don't have a base. I don't know what this height is because I don't know what this angle is. The only way to know what the height is is to know what this angle is so I can use you know, a comparison using my trig. However, what if I change it around so that, you know, so this is 135, and this would be 8, and this would be 12, this would be C, this would be A, and this would be B. If I turned it on its side, now, I have a right triangle here. I can find that height. And this is all derivation of this formula. It's not strictly necessary that you be able to derive the formula. But notice now I can find the height because I know this angle. I know the base is 8. So 1 half base times height gives us our area. So we can always do any combination of A, B, and C, okay? You're going to have the two sides, the other angle. So we've got A and B, side C. We could also do A and C, side B, or B and A, or B and C, side A. Okay, so the formula will work out any way, any way you do it. Erase. So we're talking about area equals one half AB sine C or one half AC sine B or one half BC sine A. Any of these formulas will work for our area depending on what we've what we're given. Okay? So in this case, if we want to find the area, one half A is twelve, B is eight sine of C is sine of 135 degrees. So we just multiply all that together. 0.5 times 12 times 8 times sine of 135 gives us that the area rounded to the nearest square meter is 34 meters squared. Now, when you do area, make sure you have a square unit, okay? Because it's this is technically one half times 12 meters times eight meters, so you wind up with a meter times a meter, which is a meter squared. Don't forget about your dimensional analysis in there, okay? So this is just a formula, plain and simple.
So our last thing we want to do is an actual application. So we've got two fire lookout stations that are 13 miles apart. Uh, and you're given that station B is directly east of station A. So they're right across from each other. If both stations spot a fire, and we know the angle to that fire from both ways, then can we find how far the station is away from one of the, uh, how far the fire is away from the station? Well, we should be able to because at this point, we've got angles and a side. So if we've got two angles and a side, we should be able to figure out the entire triangle. So it's given that the bearing of the fire from station A is north 35 east. So remember, we go north first and then 35 degrees in the east direction. And then from station B is north 49 west. Okay? So if we have an ABC triangle, what is angle A going to be? Right, 55. How do we know that? It's a 90 degree angle right there, right? So we just subtract 35 from 90. Over here, same deal. What is B going to be? How much? 41, yeah. 41 degrees, OK? So now I've got big A, big B, and little c. Do I know big C? Absolutely. I just do 180 minus 55 minus 41, and that's 84 degrees. So I'm trying to find how far to the nearest tenth of a mile the fire is from station B. So I'm looking for this length, which is what letter? It's a little a. So A over sine A equals C over sine C. So A over sine of 55 degrees equals 13 over sine of 84 degrees. Multiply both sides by sine of 55. If we multiply that out, 13 times sine of 55 divided by sine of 84, 10.7 miles. All right. So, what do we think? Is it something we think we can do? Hope so. Uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, nobody's going to want to do this. I'm going to say, go ahead and start working on the homework. And everybody's like, no, I've got a test to do. So, don't worry about the homework. Work on your test. We'll worry about the, the homework next week. If y'all have any problems with anything, Remember, you can't get help on your test from the lab. Uh, you shouldn't get help from each other. It should be your own work. Uh, but if you have any questions about anything uh, semantic-wise or if you just don't understand a question, let me know so that I can at least steer you in the right direction. Okay.